I think a physical torture, I would say 100% of people who ever go through physical torture can cope. Because a human has the capability to adapt to getting beaten up. Because it's, it's bruises and cuts and broken arms, broken limbs that heals over a period, two, three days, it can heal. But when a person is put through psychological abuse, it's, uh, the mind cannot be controlled by myself or any human. It's not, you know, if I have pain in my arm, I can deal with it. I can say it's just pain and it'll get better. Give you a few ice pack, put some rub on it, it'll, it'll go better. But when a person is affected psychologically, it's, it's unlikely that person can come back to his normality, to, to come back like sane, it's impossible. So once they play with your mind psychologically, and, then, and once you just go crazy, you, I've never seen a person, a crazy person coming, coming better. But you see people with broken arms, they are men later on, they have a cast on and it works. No matter if you go crazy, no matter how many tablets are prescribed by the doctor, once you in the head, gone, you, that's permanent. But if you have broken arm, bruises, you can take a painkiller, it will heal the problem. But with, 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 with your brain, psychologically, once you've gone past the beyond a point, there's not coming back. Has there been a moment during this music torture where you feared that you would lose your mind? Of course, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I was a young individual. I was 20, 19 when I was in prison, so I was fairly young, you know, so I didn't really have much family, I don't have my family, I mean, I've got a wife now, I've got a child who's three weeks old, as, as you have seen. If that happened to me now, I don't think I would be able to survive it. But it happened to me when I was independent, I had no responsibilities, you know, I had no burden on my shoulders, you know, I have a house, or I have this, I've got to pay for this, I've got to pay for that, my kid, you know, I don't have that, um, problem. I never used to think about it. So I think it varies on the people individually. If they're married, if if they have, you know, responsibilities, and you know, for me, I did ex I did find it very very difficult to be abused psychologically. But I think because I was young and I was strong, you know, I, I dealt with it because I had to deal with that part of the psychological abuse, just the loud music. But for people who were married. For them, it's different because once you've been psychologically abused, you think about responsibilities. You know, you think about, oh, you know, I've got this much responsibility. So I've got to do this. You know, how's my family coping? You know, I don't have the extra stress on my mind. People who are married, when they've been psychologically abused, they they think about going obviously going crazy. You know, you think, damn, I'm going crazy. You know, this is gonna make me go crazy. But at the same time, they're thinking, well, if I go crazy, what what about my family? If I go crazy. Who's gonna look after my kid? You know, they have that. It's it's a stress on top of a stress. So for them, it's it's different. For me, it was different. You know, so you know, there was a time that I thought I was I was gonna crack, you know, go crazy. But you know, obviously I coped through it because I was young. Maybe that's the reason. I know other people who were married, who had families in prison, and they were you know subject to the same kind of method of torture, um, same as me, and and they came off worse. And myself, you know, they have gone crazy. I know people who, who were in a in a separate block from us. It was called Delta Block, where all the all the crazy people were. They were not crazy to start off with, when they went to Guantanamo, but over the period of two and a half years of my imprisonment, they was moved to this psychiatric block because they was diagnosed with schizophrenia or or mental illnesses who were crack crackpots basically, in other words. So you know, it depends on the individual. Myself, I felt that you know I would go crazy, but I didn't because I was young, I think. Later on, then when you were released and did talk to people about this torture with music, how was their reaction? Did they take it serious, or were they? Initially, when you tell people. Generally, when you tell people that you know you were subjected to music torture, they just laugh at you because it sounds so pathetic. Honestly, even if someone said to me, if I wasn't in Guantanamo, and some somebody else, for example, who was in Guantanamo or any other prison and were, were subject to that kind of treatment, and they would they, they came to me 
if they came to me and said, you know, I was subject to music torture, I would think, you know, what are you on about? <laughs> How can music be torture? But I, the individual has to uh, physically go through it to understand what it's like. I mean, we can sit here, uh, a lot of people can sit and say, I can understand how it can affect a person, or I can understand it's a form of torture, but you will never fully understand it until you've gone through it. It's, it's hard to comprehend. It's very difficult, because you know, the music is, is pleasure. You know, like, you know, people see, and everybody knows, music is a pleasing thing. You know, people use music for everything. People have iPods in their ear 24 hours a day these days. You know, people wake up to music, people you know, <clears throat> watch music on TV, people use music in the gym, you know, it's something that makes you feel happy, therapeutic, you know. That's music. That's what you associate music with. So when someone says to you, I've been tortured with music, in the human's mind, you think, well, how's that possible? Music is therapeutic and relaxing and comforting. How can music be torture? But that person has to be physically, he has to, you know, for him to understand it and appreciate it, he has to go through it himself. I mean, I don't, I don't ask anybody to go through it, but to fully understand it, you know, that person has to, to experience it. And um, after you have been released, um, did you suffer kind of post-traumatic uh, stress disorders, anxieties or something like that? Because it was a very intense uh -huh. period. I think for the, maybe for the first eight, nine months up to a year, I, I did suffer. For the first, I can remember for the, I can remember clearly for the first, maybe a month or two, I would wake up in my room. <clears throat> I was living on my own then, and I would wake up in my, in my room in, in in the morning, and I would sit up and I would just stay in my room, and I would actually wait for in my mind. I would wait for the MP, the soldiers, to come and give me my food. I would sit in my bed for 30, 40 minutes, waiting, thinking that the soldiers would come. And give my food you know and uh, somebody it was very difficult to integrate into society you know to shake a shake a person's hand was very uncomfortable to hug people was uncomfortable to talk to people was uncomfortable to make eye contact with people was very very uncomfortable to go to shopping was uncomfortable you know shopping centers you bump into people so many people around we lost that feeling of shaking hands because for two and a half years we never touched them, nobody you know, you wouldn't shake a hand, you wouldn't hug nobody, you couldn't look at a person because we was always told to look down, we couldn't talk, just looking up. So these basic human instincts we lost. So when I came out of prison, it was new. When I came to London, you know, it's a very busy place and you know, you're bumping into people, people brush past you. It, fe it felt very alien to me. It felt like very new and it, it was quite scary initially. And, uh, you know, for the first two months, I kept myself away from people because I, I couldn't deal with the fact that I was out in the, in the open. And into, I, was, I, was trying to, I was mixing with people. And we went out a few times to a restaurant. I found it very, very uncomfortable. I, very, I found it very uncomfortable to eat, to talk, you know. I had problems with my girlfriend uh, because, you know, I've known my girlfriend, my wife now, uh, since I was 13. We've been together for so many years, maybe 13 years now. And she waited for me. And when I got back with her, um, I lost. I, I lost how you know to communicate. You know, I wouldn't talk. I was very quiet. She would talk to me. I would give a one-word answer, and most of the day I would just 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 kind of be with her, but not talk to her. And that was quite. It was straining more on the on the relation relationship that we had. But obviously, she knew that I was in prison, and she worked with me, and and we went. Through, we got through it. You know, eventually we got through it, and she stuck by me. But you know, she's she's helped me so much to come back in, into society, and you know, she's she's helped me so much. My wife has.